If you're creating videos on YouTube or making short films, you're going to need a good camera. Here are 15 of my best picks for budget video cameras under $1,000. Before we begin today's video, make sure to subscribe to my channel for more tech videos and filmmaking and video editing tutorials, and follow my Twitter at shiny underscore films for more constant updates. All links to all cameras in this video will be in the description below. So, the first item on this list isn't really a camera, but really just a suggestion for you to use your phone as your video camera. Many smartphones in 2018 have cameras that are much better than cheap point and shoot cameras, so if you already have a phone, think about using it as your main camera. There are tons of accessories you can buy to attach phones to tripods, easy to use microphones such as Rode's VideoMic Me that are designed to be used with your phone, and gimbals such as the DJI Osmo Mobile, which can really give your video footage from your phone a cinematic quality. Either way, your mobile phone is a cinematic tool that is really seriously worth considering. But if you're after a dedicated camera, then we'll move on to point and shoot cameras. Our first camera on this list is the cheapest on this list, and it's the Panasonic Lumix ZS50. It costs $279 and can take high quality 1080p video with a small half an inch MOS sensor, and has a 24mm equivalent 30x optical zoom lens with a variable aperture from f3.3 to f6.4. What this means is that the camera is pretty average in low light, with a small sensor and low aperture lens which restrict the amount of light that the camera can pick up. And additionally, it has a variable aperture lens, meaning the further you zoom in, the smaller the hole in the lens gets and the worse the low light performance. On the bright side though, this camera has good build quality and a really high zoom range, and as usual with Panasonic cameras, is packed with useful features such as time lapse mode, inbuilt image stabilization, a small viewfinder, and a focus ring. Our second camera on the point and shoot list is the big brother to the ZS50, and it's called the Panasonic ZS70S. It comes in at $397, so over $100 more expensive than the previous one, but it packs in 4K video in a 20 megapixel sensor. It has the same 30x optical zoom, variable aperture lens, and pretty much the same body, but has a flip out screen for vlogging. Also, the 4K modes on this camera adds features like 4K photo and post focus, which can be useful for photographers, and the 4K video adds an extra level of detail and clarity to your video footage. 4K definitely isn't necessary for most YouTube videos, but it's definitely a useful and practical feature to have. Our third point and shoot camera is the Canon G7X Mark II, and it's probably the most popular point and shoot out there, especially for vloggers. It only shoots 1080p and costs around $600, but has a bigger 20 megapixel 1 inch sensor and a bright f1.8 to f2.8 lens. This results in great low light performance for point and shoot cameras. The lens has a 4.2x optical zoom, and the display is tilting, which is perfect for vloggers. It doesn't have a mic input, but the built-in mic sounds pretty good. Our fourth camera on the list is the Panasonic LX10. This camera is pretty much a direct competitor to the Canon G7X Mark II. It's got a similar 1 inch 20 megapixel sensor, a bright 3x optical zoom f1.4 to 2.8 lens, and has a flip-up screen for vlogging. This camera also boasts 4K video capability, unlike the 1080p on the Canon G7X, and it has a higher resolution and clearer looking video in comparison. It's also got a viewfinder for viewing images in bright sunlight. Now we're going to be moving out of the point and shoot cameras range and into the mirrorless and DSLR cameras. These cameras are the real cameras that I'd probably recommend for making most YouTube videos and for photography, as they have larger sensors, detachable lenses, and more manual control than the point and shoot cameras. Really professional looking video can only really be achieved with these kinds of cameras, so let's take a look at our fifth camera, the Canon Rebel T3i. The T3i is an older DSLR, released in 2011, but offers some of the best value for money in terms of Canon's DSLR lineup, coming in at just over $300, depending on where you get it from. As with most entry-level DSLRs, it has an APS-C size sensor, which is much bigger than the 1-inch sensor found in premium compact cameras, and it dwarfs the sensor found in your smartphone. This results in much better low-light performance and a shallower depth of field, which is the effect created when only the subject is in focus, and the background is blurred. And with a DSLR, you have interchangeable lenses for greater control of the image. Unfortunately, the T3i has nothing much else to offer other than soft 1080p video and 18 megapixel stills. 
It's a pretty old and bare bones camera, and I'd recommend getting into some of Canon's newer entry level models, which I'll get into very soon. The sixth camera on our list is the Nikon D3400. It's the cheapest current entry level DSLR you can get from Nikon, and it's just above $300. It can record 1080p video at 60 frames per second, and has a slightly larger DX format 24 megapixel sensor. It has Bluetooth and Wi-Fi connectivity, and more modern features that the T3i lacks, but it's still an entry-level basic DSLR. Definitely get this over the old D3300, as the body hasn't changed much, but the kit lenses have definitely been upgraded. The seventh camera on the list is the Canon 1300D or Rebel T6 for the American version, which is Canon's $344 modern entry level DSLR to compete with the Nikon D3400. It has an APS-C 18 megapixel sensor and it can record 1080p video at up to 30 frames per second. No entry level DSLR at this price point is going to be packed with advanced useful features, and so making a decision at this price point really comes down to personal preference. No entry level DSLR at this price point is going to be packed with advanced useful features, so making a decision at this price point really comes down to personal preference. Many people like Canon for its color accuracy, while others may choose Nikon for sharper video or more modern design and features. The choice of lenses between the two manufacturers may also be a deciding factor. The eighth camera on this list is the Yi M1. Yes, we're now venturing into mirrorless territory. The main difference between mirrorless cameras and DSLRs is the DSLRs have an optical viewfinder thanks to a mirror assembly in front of the sensor, but mirrorless cameras don't have one, often replacing it with an electronic viewfinder. Although it obviously differs between each camera, this results in mirrorless cameras being smaller and lighter, and has no real impact on the image quality. Canon and Nikon are traditionally known for their DSLRs, but have also made mirrorless cameras, while companies such as Sony and Panasonic only create mirrorless cameras. The Yi M1 is a mirrorless camera from Yi, with a micro four thirds sensor that is slightly smaller than APS-C. It shoots 4K video and 20 megapixel photos, but has poor build quality and features of the camera other than basics are not stellar. While the video is 4K, it doesn't really match that of most other mirrorless cameras, and things such as low light, dynamic range, color reproduction, lens selection, and focus speed and accuracy aren't quite as amazing as more expensive cameras. Still, at $300, with a kit lens, the camera is a steal for a dodgy Chinese company. Our next camera is the Sony A5100. It's a $450 mirrorless camera with a kit lens, and shoots 1080p video at up to 60 frames per second from a 24 megapixel APS-C size sensor. It has a lightning fast autofocus in comparison to the previous cameras, and is definitely a solid option if you're considering a budget 1080p mirrorless camera. The tenth camera on our list is the Panasonic G7. I might be a little biased putting it on this list here though, and that's because it's the camera that I currently own. Coming in at $500 now with a kit lens, it shoots 4K video at 30 frames per second, and 1080p video at 60 frames per second. All Panasonic cameras use a micro four thirds sensor, including this one, with a 16 megapixel sensor. Unlike the newer Panasonic models, the G7 has no sensor stabilization, but the kit lens does have some. The reason why I love this camera so much is because it has all the features I'll ever need, in a body that is lightweight and small, yet good to grip. It has a superb flip screen and the viewfinder, and the quality of the video is really amazing. It isn't quite as good as some of the newer models, for example, the G85 offers in-body image stabilization, and the G9 offers 4K video at 60 frames per second but the G7 is still by far the best value for money. Of course, I would highly recommend this camera. The 11th camera on this list is the Canon M100. It's Canon's entry-level mirrorless camera and is priced at $500. It can shoot 1080p video at up to 60 frames per second and has a large APS-C sensor in a really small body that's only a little bit bigger than some compact point-and-shoot cameras. It lacks dial functionality, and instead, most functionality is controlled from within the touchscreen interface. I've included it on this list because it's the cheapest of the Canon cameras, but it's definitely aimed at beginners, so if you want a more advanced Canon mirrorless camera under $1000, then search for the rest of Canon's M-Line. This camera though also has a flip screen, handy for vloggers and selfie takers. The twelfth camera on our list is the Nikon D5600. It's a step up from the D3400, with a higher quality sensor, 
better processor, and higher quality 1080p video at 60 frames per second. It's most famous for its great photography potential, but is also a quality camera for making videos. You also have access to use all of Nikon's compatible lenses. The next and 13th camera on this list is a very interesting contender. The Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera is by no means a steal at $700 for 1080p video, but it is targeted for filmmakers who want to produce video of super cinematic quality. And that's because the camera has a Super 16 film size sensor. It has high quality lossless Cinema DNG RAW and Apple ProRes recording, and 13 stops of dynamic range. The lossless RAW and ProRes file formats mean that you have no loss of quality when recording, and a ton of flexibility when editing this footage. The 13 stops of dynamic range is really truly incredible. It allows the camera to capture dark shadows and bright highlights in the same shot, which lends to a super cinematic look. The camera can't take photos though, and the battery life is pretty terrible. The camera has a Micro Four Thirds mount, and so you can use every Panasonic and Olympus lens with it, along with other Micro Four Thirds lenses from third party. The 14th camera on this list is the Canon 70D, for $750. This is simply a high-end Canon DSLR. It's best known as a photography camera, but can record 1080p video at 30 frames per second. It was used by Casey Neistat as his main vlogging camera for ages, before it was superseded by the 80D. It has Canon's dual pixel autofocus, which is very well known to be excellent and works very well with video. Of course, being a Canon DSLR, it has a wide selection of quality lenses. The final camera in this video is the Sony A6300, which is one of the most popular mirrorless cameras at $850. It's been superseded by the A6500, but is still very good with 4K video recording at 30 frames per second and 1080p video at 120 frames per second for slow motion. It has a 24 megapixel APS-C sensor and super fast autofocus and takes great pictures as well. Sony's E-mount lenses are wide in variety and are good quality, especially the Zeiss ones. So that's my top 15 picks for video cameras for YouTube and video making. What do you think is the best out of this list? And are there any cameras that you would add to this list? Have your say in the comments below. Make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and follow my Twitter at shiny underscore films. Check out my other videos and until the next one, stay shiny.